this is maybe a shock to some, maybe everyone who's listening. It, given how much people talk and obsess over heart disease, and rightly so, it's the number one killer, you think we would know exactly how an atherosclerotic plaque forms in the first place, but we don't. So the focus on the plaque comes from the, the fact that within, around the heart and what is feeding the heart, it's blood, the, heart, the, uh, the blood that the heart needs for all the heart muscle in order to continue to contract and relax all the time, it, it needs a lot of blood. And those coronary arteries can become blocked with plaques or what's called an atheroma or an atherosclerotic plaque. And we know some of the composition of those plaques we know that there are some fats in there. We know that there are a lot of these things called foam cells, which I will come back to in a great deal because they are likely very important in this process. But despite knowing the composition of these plaques, we don't exactly know what's happening. So that needs to be disclosed right at the forefront of the conversation. Anyone who's speaking about the formation of a plaque is speculating. And if you are hearing someone who's speaking about the formation of a plaque in absolute terms, shut them off because they don't know. They're just speculating and they're speaking with a false authority, which is something I don't want to do. I, I want to be very cautious in speaking about this. So that's why I'm disclosing that up front. We know the composition of the plaque, and, and that has led some to erroneously conclude that they know all the process. Now, I'd mentioned these things called foam cells. Foam cells appear to be essential. They are always there at the site of the atherosclerotic plaque. And we think that they are contributing because they are, um, it, it really fits in very, very well together. It helps us bring a lot of these pieces together. And in some instances, actually physically bringing things together. We know that inflammation is a very big part of atherosclerosis. In fact, as much as people obsess over LDL cholesterol and they obsess over it as a marker of heart disease, which is something we've kind of touched on before, LDL is a terrible predictor of heart disease. C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation, actually is a better predictor of heart disease. And, and it might be because of the foam cell. So very briefly, we have these things through in, in our bodies called macrophages. Macrophages are kind of the prototypical or poster child immune cell. It's flowing. These are flowing through the blood and they can, they can go into tissues anywhere throughout the body. So you find macrophages all over the body, in the blood and out of the blood within tissues. In the wall of the blood vessels, what can happen is we have a, a macrophage that engulfs an LDL cholesterol. And as it's eating too many of these, it gets fat. And when you look at this fatty macrophage under a microscope, all these big pockets of fat in the macrophage look like air bubbles. In fact, it looks like it's foamy. It's a foamy cell. And that's why they call it a foam cell. So again, a foam cell is a fat macrophage. And as the macrophage is eating these LDL cholesterol molecules, it starts to secrete pro-inflammatory proteins or cytokines like C-reactive protein. So these foam cells appear to be an essential player in the process of, of an atheroma or an atherosclerotic plaque developing. Now that's all kind of background. Now the first study that I wanted to highlight in the metabolic classroom is a study published in 1979 by this legendary pair. And I do mean that. These guys are serious scientists, won the Nobel Prize, Brown and Goldstein. And at the time, they, uh, they were at the University of Texas, uh, San Antonio. And they, I think that's where they were. The, the name of this article is Binding Site on Macrophages that Mediates Uptake and Degradation and, and so on. It's published in the journal PNAS, again, 1979. What they found, the gist of it and why I'm touching on it, is that they would incubate macrophages with LDL cholesterol, native LDL cholesterol. In other words, LDL cholesterol, that it was just innocent, normal LDL cholesterol. Indeed, most of the LDL cholesterol that the average person has flowing through the blood. And you couldn't make the macrophage eat or consume or engulf that LDL. They just would sit there and hang out together as good little buddies, you know, sitting at the bar. 
It was only when the LDL molecule, um, the LDL molecule had been altered in some way, and I'll come to that more in a moment, then the macrophage sensed that altered LDL as a problem and engulfed it. So there has to be something that happens to the LDL, not the LDL alone that's the problem. Something must happen to it. 